<laughs> okay, so now uh, we've done all this preliminary work. So this was preliminary work, and now we're able to talk about random walks condition to stay non-negative or positive. And well, so first a uh, few words. What do you mean? What do we mean by this? So there might be well at least two types of conditioning. Uh, studied uh, previously. So the first one is um, so we can think about our random work, SN. So we can think about either one position or maybe a trajectory of the random work. But uh, if we talk about one position, then uh, first type of conditioning might be what will happen if you look at the random walk and probably the sun belongs to B, but your condition of tau being greater than M. Okay, so so you so this is sort of large deviation because probability that tau is greater than M, as we know, behaves like C over square root of M. Uh, so this is this probability is small and we just look at what will happen with our process if we condition on this event okay, So that's one sort of conditioning you can look at. And so this was studied in the 70s. Uh, there were several papers, I think Siegel had. I don't remember. Yes, and then um, 2000 and maybe just a little hard to look at this. Okay, so that's the first type of condition you can talk about. Now there is another type of conditioning, <coughs> and that's what I am going to discuss. Now suppose suppose you look uh, at the random walk. But you, you, you're no longer looking at some specific moment of time. You look at the look as a whole, and you condition it never to exit. Okay, so somehow so you want something like this. You want to define well uh, distributions of the random walk on the event as one. Okay, so let's talk about finding dimensional distribution on the event that tau equals to infinity. Right? So, so let's put so it's not uh, really rigorous immediately because this event has zero probability, right? So somehow so if you try to do this directly, you might end up in trouble. Right, so so the, so the way to see it, you can think about this as sort of the limit. Okay, so you so what you can do, you can apply the limiting procedure, and then you can define this probability that S one S K belongs to B, given that how greater than n, so look at this event, and, and now you send n to plus infinity, you look at this event as n goes to infinity, and now you want to say something about finite dimensional distribution of this, um, sorry, of, of, of this new object, right, and Okay, and that will be the second type of conditioning of the random work, and that's what I am going to discuss now. So uh, I will um, postpone this limiting procedure a little bit. So I will uh, find, so, so I will first introduce the, the limit that we are going to get. So there is a nice limit that you can get using this procedure. So you can define in a reasonable way this random work condition to stay positive. And I will first introduce this limit, and this will make use of all the things that we have discussed so far. Okay, so uh, so, so the limiting project. So this exists. So this limit exists. And good. 
light. So what I'm going to do, I will introduce uh, somehow the limit and then we'll show the kind of reference. First I'm going to change notation a little bit. So now, uh, from now on, uh, I will denote the random work started at x with the subscript. Okay, so, so, so basically it's probably the x. So we'll use this notation, so probability measure corresponding to the random walk static at x, so it will be noted with the subscript x. So that's uh, the notation. And now what we know? So we know that so what uh, we have almost shown in the previous theorem is that d is a harmonic function. Form the random work. So this means that, so let me repeat it one more time, so that is expectation of, so I'm going to put now x, the starting point, and subscript, expectation of v x1 on the event tau greater than 1, so I don't need subscript x anymore, so tau is the first time when this random work exists in the negative upline, it's already given here. Okay, so that's, that makes sense, right? So this new notation, it is equal to the of x. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do so-called dupes transform and introduce uh, a mark of chain. So now we can introduce a mark of chain. Well, so to introduce, to, to introduce a mark of chain, we just need to specify transition probability. So basically, uh, we can specify uh, the transition probability of this mark of chain expectation of x v uh, s1 as uh, where is it? So I need to put x. So for arbitrary bounded and of course measurable path we put so we define transition probability by the following rules so expectation and you start at x and you arrive to position s1 is equal to expectation x Dimensional distribution for 
uh, say how you can do it. So, or alternatively, uh, we can introduce <coughs> our uh, uh, process. By uh, specifying, by giving. Sorry, what what is the Markov chain here? What is the new Markov chain? S, well, S one. So so so, I'm, so what I'm doing, I'm changing the measure. Okay. Right. So my previous measure was uh, space homogeneous. Now my new measure is not space homogeneous, and my new object is no longer. And okay, so you're, doing, you're doing this for every x, so that defines no matter what your starting point is for the next increment. Yes. Yes, so I can do it for all x's. And this is indeed a nice measure because of this harmonic property, and also because v of x is strictly positive. Okay, so that's something that we need to assume as well in order to avoid any kind of problems here as a result. So we, introduce, so we can introduce the process by giving its finite dimensional distributions. Finite dimensional. Distributions then is going to be, which is one expectation to start at x, v, f, s, 1, and s, k, so that's equal to um, expectation of x and v as k over v of x, f as 1 as k down greater than k. So that's another way of writing this down. So, so I'll give you an example very shortly just to see what we are going to get in the result. So let's, let's put it on Now we can uh, somehow restrict ourselves to the integers only. Now the first thing, so I want to somehow give meaning to all those notions. So first of all, that's what we need to do. We need to find our renewal function. So in this case, one can find the facts. There's also a problem how you can find the effects in general. So you know a lot about the effects, but our explicit forms are rare. So in this case, let's let's see how we can actually find the effects from here. and x to z. So to find v of x, we need somehow to 
find our letter heights, right? So here, what do we have? So suppose uh, we start at zero. Now our process uh, might stay might might stay here for a while. Then it goes down. Uh, well, nothing is going on here. But now it goes down, and that's our first time tau, right? So what we know here is that we don't know tau, right? It's a random variable, but we know the letter height, right? So the first letter height is very easy to find, so it's just one. Okay? So chi one <coughs> is equal to one and so on, right? So, so the second letter height will be equal to one and so on and so forth. Now this makes it very easy to find the effects. So just how, count how many letter heights you had up to time x, and that's going to be x plus one. Okay, so that's so then g of x is equal to x plus one. Okay, so that's uh, my. So that's the first uh, thing that I need, so, so you can uh, so you can check chromaticity as homework. Chromaticity directly. Okay, now let's let's see what the mark of chain we are going to get. So, so I can take various f in that definition. So what I'm going to do, I will take f, so if we start at x, so I'm, so I'm going to take f first to the indicator that, well, so f of y is indicated that y is equal to x plus 1, and then I'm going to take f to the equal indicator that y equals x minus 1. So then, what, what I'm going to get, so my mark of change, the probability that it will go from x to x plus 1, so that's going to be that expectation, so that's expectation. You start at x and you plug in indicator that x1 is equal to x plus one, and um, I, I need to put V here. Okay, so that's what I'm computing. So that's expectation of my Markov chain, and I'm gonna use that formula. So this formula says that I need to start at X, then I just plug in indicator that S1 is equal to Y plus sorry, uh, x plus 1, divided by d of x, which is equal. Mm. Okay, so I start at x, then uh, I have d. S plus 1 divided by D of X, indicator that S1 is equal to X plus 1, and I have to plug in tau greater than 1. Okay, so that's just the definition. Now I can safely ignore tau greater than 1, because if I'm in position X, and S1 is equal to X plus 1, this means I moved up, so there is no way I left my state space. Okay, so that's going to be an equal now. So expectation of x, and now I can plug in the values, right? So I indicate f1 equals x plus 1, means that I can plug in x plus 1 here, so I get vx plus 1 divided by d of x. Okay, and now 
I can take the x plus 1 over d of x out and I will get the probability that we start at x is 1 equals to x plus 1 which is 1 over 2 because it is a simple random block and, that's, and that gives me my probability so that's going to be 1 over 2 here I will get uh, x plus 2 divided by x plus 1 Okay, and now, uh, well, for x, uh, so this is always true for x greater or equal than 0. And now, well, you can see that I can find other probabilities in a very similar way. So if I use this function, then I will get for x uh, strictly greater than 0 using indicator that y equals x minus 1, I will obtain a probability that we go from x to x minus 1 are being equal to uh, b x minus 1 over d of x times 1 over 2. Uh, which should result in 1 over 2 x x plus 1 Why do we need to compute it? It's just complementary event <laughs> I mean Well, it doesn't matter so Yeah, <laughs> yeah so what I uh, want to say is that uh, the only difference is that we will have is when x equals to zero. So when x equals to zero. Yeah, when x equals to zero, you can only jump up, right? So you can go, you cannot go down. So you're gonna get two over one. Yeah. So, 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 so you're gonna get one there, which means that you should go back. So that that's indeed so what you what you got is indeed the mark of chain that is on positive half line on the on, on negative half line and well somehow this works in the general case and the general case of course the effects is something that you need which is difficult to compute but but still it can be found now um okay so that's uh so that's example which might be useful to have in mind. Now, I want to make uh, several connections. The first one is... Uh, is this one. So in this example, uh, we have obtained Markov chain and the drift of this Markov chain is something that it's not difficult to compute. So the drift of this Markov chain of the resulting Markov chain and can be found as follows. So expectation x of s1 minus x, so you can just compute it, so that's going to be equal to x plus 1 times 1 over 2 x plus 2 divided by x plus 1 plus x minus 1 times 1 over 2 x over x plus 1 minus x. So if you do computations, what you're going to get is um, a heat egg. Mm. One, one over <laughs> x plus one. Well, it should be one over like that's bad. Yeah. One over x plus one. One over x plus one. Yeah. Okay. You go up with um, Yes. That's yeah, that is 1 over x plus 1. Now, our variance <laughs> of So 
variance of x1 is approaching 1, right? So, 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 wait a second. So, so probably not the variance, uh, a better thing to find will be the displacement s1 minus x squared, right? So, so replacement is either plus 1 or minus 1. In any case, what you square, you're going to get. One. Right, so now uh, when you think about this, so what you have is that, so you have something each. So the gift behaves like 1 over x, the variance behaves like 1. So if you try to write down the correspond, so if you think about some kind of continuous time process that will have approximately the same dynamics, then you're going to get a process which should satisfy something like this, so dx t should be equal to 1 over x t dt, right? So that will correspond to the drift coefficient plus dt. Okay, so that's continuous time analog. Okay, and basically this is so-called Bessel process, right? So this is Bessel process. Is, um, Bessel process, and again, so in this case, it's already something that you know that um, well, some of the Bessel processes can be defined as the modulus of the Brownian motion of, of, of of three-dimensional Brownian motion in this case. So, so basically this process can be defined as the modulus of three-dimensional Brownian motion. And also another thing which you know, this process can be defined as the Brownian motion conditioned to stay positive in a very similar way. So it can be defined <coughs> as a Brownian motion. Conditions stay good. Okay, so you can use exactly the same construction, but um, you're gonna have a slightly easier harmonic function now. So, so here you can use using the harmonic function. B of x, which is equal to x. Okay, so for the Brownian motion, <coughs> well, it's it's been so this has been known since nineties. For the Brownian motion, I think it's probably seventies or maybe even earlier. This construction has been known. Now uh, this is quite uh, so this behavior is quite typical and. In general, so in general, uh, by the review of the theorem, d of x behaves like c times x. So if you use the renewal of theorem, then you can see that you're going to get some kind of similar behavior. So if you, if you compute the mean drift in the general case and apply the renewal theorem, still you're going to get not exactly 1 over x plus 1, but something which decays like one, uh, like c over x, and the same will happen with... It's, it's not exactly 1 over v of x, is it? Uh, no, it's not exactly 1 over v of x. So here, we are very lucky. <laughs> there and there. <laughs> well, look okay, at basically... It's, an, it's a nice property of the nearest neighbor in the world. Okay, so that's the example. Now, um, now let's just uh, do this connection.
is now what we can actually prove. So we can uh, prove that this uh, convergence does hold. So, so we have all what we need by this time material. Somehow we can justify this name why it is run, why it is random work condition to stay positive. So now this is theorem four probably. So let F be a bounded function. Theorem five. Theorem five, thank you. Uh, S, uh, so S is my uh, random walk that depends only on the first K points. Basically, so somehow you can condition on the event tau greater tau equals plus infinity, and the resulting process will be indeed this loop H transform of the original random block. Okay, and the proof so once we have everything, we've done all the work, and now the proof is not that difficult. Basically, so first, uh, what we can say is that so f is a bounded function, then well, we can assume that it's between 0 and 1 for the convergence. We can assume that 0 is less or equal than f, less or equal than 1, or otherwise we can just shift and rescale the function to achieve this. Okay, and then um, let's, let's just do those computations. Uh, let's compute the lower limit first. So then, so dim f as n goes plus infinity expectation x. F S one S K given tau greater than F. So you can just write this as Lim and goes plus infinity expectation X F S one S K on the event tau greater than n, the value of probability that tau greater This is something that we know, as we will see. So now what you can do, you can uh, split this event tau greater than n in two parts. So first you write that's link and um, goes to plus infinity. Expectation. 
definition, start at x, f, s, 1, s, k. Um, for events, for tau to be greater than n, tau, of course, should be greater than k. Okay, so you write it as indicator, tau. greater than n. So I'm going to keep my indicator tau greater than n as this and this thing this thing. Now uh, what I want, want to do, so I want to somehow use the chain property. So if I condition on fk, so right. So now uh, what I want to notice is that uh, this thing, well, it's completely defined by fk, so I can take it outside. This thing is defined by fk, I can take it outside, and I can use the Markov property, which says that I can consider this event, so that's going to be tau greater than m minus k, with my random walk started at the position sk. Okay, so let me write it down. So that's going to be lim, lim and goes infinity expectation x f s1 s2 s k indicator tau greater than k and here I will have expectation you I start at s k and indicate that tau greater than n divided by a magnitude of x. <coughs> greater than n minus k. So now what do we know? So we know that, so recall that for any one Consider this difference, probability, you start at y, tau greater than f minus k, and you divide the probability you start at x and tau greater than n. Okay, so that's what you're considering. So now we know that um, this thing is equal to some constant c, b of y. 1 of the square root of n minus k and the thing in the denominator is, equal, is equivalent to c v of x 1 divided by square root of n as it goes to plus infinity. Okay, and now well both constants will be cancelled 1 of the square root of n minus k divided by square root of n are going to cancel one. So what I can see is that for any y and x, this must converge to v of y over v of x. Here's a fix, the starting point. Now uh, if we go back to uh, this limit, 
So what I really have here, I have an expectation of indicator, which is nothing else but probability. And I can also apply Fatou's lemma. Fatou's lemma, well, will work. Everything is positive, everything is nice. I can put my lower limit inside my expectation. So that's going to be great for recall and expectation x. S. S. S1, Sk indicator tower greater than k, mean probability Sk tau greater than n minus k over px tau greater than a, and this is nothing else but expectation of x, f, s, 1, s, k, indicator tau greater than k, v of s, k. So now my y will be replaced by s, k, divided by v of x. And by definition, that's expectation, we start with x, and you change measure with v of f, s, 1, Okay. okay, so that's uh, what we need. Now, uh, if we apply, so this is the lower limit, but we need an upper limit as well, but that's not a problem. Because what we can do, so we can apply the same uh, reasoning to one minus f. Okay, so we can see the function one minus f. And then, then what we are going to get is if we plug in one minus f and if we put one, if we cancel once, we're gonna get an upper limit. Okay, so we will obtain to obtain the other limit. Okay, and that that will give you the proof. All right, so, so that's um, Okay, so that's more or less what I wanted to prove today. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make several uh, comments. So basically, here we have just convergence of... So we just show that our definition makes sense in, in the sense of this convergence. So what you can do next, you can study this uh, new process. So we can uh, study this uh, Markov chain condition, which 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 was, which was obtained from the random walk by conditioning it to be non-negative. And then there is a there are several uh, powerful results about this Markov chain as well. So for example, uh, you have convergence of um, This mark of chain, so you can uh, still rescale it, and then this mark of chain, this can random walk addition to stay positive, will converge to the corresponding continuous process. So in this case, mark of chain condition to stay positive will converge to the basal process, which is Brown and Marshall condition to stay positive. Also, you can prove. Uh, local limit theorems for this uh, mark of chains and other results as well. Okay, so, so but um, effectively, if you think about this whole construction, the main uh, thing that we need, so we need somehow to find asymptotics for tau being greater than n, then when we found this asymptotics, this magic harmonic function appeared, and this heavily relied on the Wiener-Hoff factorization. Okay, so, so this whole discussion 
depends crucially on the Wiener Hoff factorization. Now, for the, for the Wiener Hoff factorization, if you try to extend it to the multi dimensional case, uh, well, from my point of view, there are, uh, key, there are several key things for the Wiener Hoff factorization to work, and one of them is the duality. Let me just <clears throat> okay, so this construction heavily depends on Wiener Hoff factorization. So for Wiener Hoff factorization, method we need. Okay, so basically it means that if you consider one random walk um, like this. Uh, well, the random walk that. Well, so we can consider well, so let's, let's, let's Fix them. And this construction works. This construction works. Okay, so we can fix n. We can fix n. And put x and star to be a problem. So x1, so I'm going to reverse time, x and minus 1, star is going to be equal to x2, and x1, star is going to be equal to x n. So you define your random variables, so that's one of the ways to derive the Wiener Hoff factorization. And then you define S and star to be equal to S K star to be equal to X one star plus X K star. So you can see the, the random work in the opposite direction. And one then there is a nice representation, so you can write this as X N plus X N minus k plus 1, I think, and as a result, that's going to be equal to Sn minus Sn minus k. Okay, so that's how you start, then you proceed, so, so I'm not going through all other steps, but basically, uh, somehow, the important thing is that for the reverse process, Sk star, so this reverse process has exactly the same distribution as the original process. So that's one thing that you need to this so-called duality. And another observation is that uh, somehow when you do this time reversal, your, uh, the domain, the positive half line will change in, in a nice way as well. So effectively, there are two observations. Therefore, um, so therefore, it is unlikely, well, likely that the winner pop works in, well, so you can I don't know, you can have several situations. So for example, if you have different distribution of xk, then it is unlikely to be the problem to work. Or if you have a domain which is more complicated, like if you can see that uh, multi-dimensional random work on a more complicated domain, then again, it is unlikely that the Wiener Hopf factorization is going to work in general. So you can get some sort of Wiener Hopf, but it will be more complicated. So, so basically, so you need to do something else, and that's what I'm going to discuss next week. So what you can do in the multi-dimensional case.
space. So some a new construction and new method. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.